Hey Ross World, my money makes money. Debt. We talked about this plenty of times before, but how important is it to handle your debt? It is one of the most important things you can do, if not the most important thing to do with your finances because debt is the hallmark, is the heart, it is the beat on the drum of your finances, okay? It is what starts your finances and it would finish your finances. What is he talking about? All of these analogies, okay? All this poppycock. What I'm talking about is this. Debt can either kill your finances or the riddance of debt can boost your finances. So the amount of debt that you have, you actually have to count that towards your income, okay? Because debt ain't going nowhere unless you take care of it. Some people try to put debt away. Oh, I'm just going to put $50 on that because I still want to do this and I want to do that. In life, guys, you have to make sacrifices, okay? Sacrifices in order to see the future, in order to do things in the future because debt will continually accumulate and compound interest and it will basically destroy your bottom line. What is your bottom line? I always talk about the bottom line. The bottom line is having money in your pocket, having money continually continuously to come in when you don't want to work no more because not everybody wants to work forever. Now, some of you out there have awesome and really great careers and great jobs or maybe you're an entrepreneur, you have your own business, but not even you want to work until the day you die. Maybe a couple of you, but most people say, hey, when I hit around my late 50s or my early 60s, I want to be chilling. I want to be traveling. I want to see the eight wonders of the world. Is it seven? I'm going to go with seven. The seven wonders of the world, okay? Whatever they may be at the time because they change. I don't know if you knew that. They change. But the point I'm making is this. I always talk about making a fund and doing the things that you want to do. And as summer is coming closer, you probably want to even more so tackle your debt. For those of you who use your tax return and who is going to use their tax return and kill their debt, that is a good thing. That is a good thing because your tax return, your tax return, you shouldn't look at it as a bonus. It's money that you never had. Now, some of you, unfortunately, owe on your taxes. Now, if you're married or you're single, I always claim single and zero, okay? Single and zero, regardless. That way you never end up owing taxes if you do it correctly. Then there's another block, and I'm no tax guru, so let's get that out the way. I will never, ever try to teach you about taxes. That's a, a profession you need to do that, okay? H&R, Block, TurboTax, whatever, okay? One of those people, Jackson Hewitt, is that you can allocate an additional amount of money to come out of your paycheck to pay more on your taxes. And then at the end of the year, when you claim yourself because you pay so much more, you're going to get that refund because some people actually use that as a savings account. Now, is that a good idea? In my opinion, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I'm going to tell you why. You're giving the government more money to handle whatever their affairs and business that they have interest-free. Okay, if you're going to do that, just go ahead and buy bonds, buy government bonds, and that's giving a loan to the government that they're going to pay you back at 3 and 4%. Okay, now we're trying to these different ways. The only thing I would ever do is claim single and zero. And then some people will tell you, hey, actually claim yourself so the government don't use your money and you can actually invest that money. Hey, whatever suits your, whatever floats your boat, guys, whatever you feel is comfortable. But I would never say give the additional amount that you can allocate. But I will say is I claim single and zero. Then with my return, if I have debt, I apply it to it like, hey, the tax return I'm getting now, I'm applying it to my debt, okay? Any debt that I may have, whether it be a credit card, a, a, a car loan, whatever it may be, is going strictly to debt. Because usually, as I said in a couple of videos before, I use my tax return as trip money, as I'm going on a trip. Maybe I'm going down to Florida, or maybe I'm going to Virginia Beach. Whatever it may be, that is what I usually use my tax return is to travel with. But if I have debt, I'm just gonna use it and get rid of my debt. And then if I'm out of debt, I only have a surplus of fund, a surplus of money coming in. So I just make me a fund and say, hey, 
probably in late July or August, I want to go here. So let me start allocating two or three hundred a month and save up for that. And I can do that. And I don't have debt working against me. That's what happens. You forget about debt, but debt don't forget about debt. While it's in the background, okay? While it's one of those back windows that you know it's there, but you're not really paying attention to it, it's accumulating interest. So I just want you guys to take care of your debt because that is the, one of the hardest things that we face today is handling our debt. We want money to have fun because we work our bus off. We stay late at work. We do all of these things that we feel like we're not getting paid enough. But the one thing you don't have your focus on is debt. Debt will kill you. Debt will kill you because you're going to be in your 50s and 60s and you're going to need a surplus of cash. Maybe your Social Security is coming in. Maybe your passive income, your investments, your dividends. They're going to say, hey, hey man, you owe us this money. And they report that to the collections agencies. And they're coming out of your head to pay off your debt that you should have paid off 10, 20 years ago. So if you're not paying off your debt or if you're paying a really minuscule amount, a very minute amount, I don't want you to do that. I want you to be aggressive in the debt that you have. Now, I'm going to leave you with this. And I said it before. I want you to take your smallest debt, your smallest loan. Maybe you have $2,000 on your credit card. Maybe you have $5,000 left on your car, but that is your only debt. Or maybe you have certain amounts of debt on each. So maybe you have two credit cards and one credit card is $2,000. Another credit card is $5,000 and maybe you have some other personal loans. I want you to attack the smallest credit card at 2,000 first. Pay it off. Pay a little bit, $5 over the minimum on your other ones. Okay, this is psychology of paying off debt because what, that is obtainable. You know 2,000 is attainable because you're gonna set three, 400 a month and you're gonna be hurting a little bit and that's fine. But you're trying to get, you're trying to get rid of this debt so when you get into your 50s and 60s, you don't have any debt. So that's the psychology of money. When you're paying off that smallest one, it's going to encourage you to pay the next one. And maybe because you now paid off that one, the amount of money that you was paying for that one, you can tack on to that. What am I talking about? You allocated $300 to pay off your $2,000 debt, but you were still doing $50 on the $5,000 one. Now you can now pay $350 with that, okay? The minimum amount that you was paying and also the $300 you was allocating to the $2,000 one. And then for your car or whatever other personal loan you have, you continue to tack on that amount, tack onto that amount, and you will see how it will compound. You get what I'm trying to say? It compounds on itself to pay off your debt. Hopefully, that's just another way that I explained it that may help you in your debt walk and getting rid of debt. Because when you get to your 50s and you're still trying to look great and you're taking care of yourself and working out, you don't want to be on nobody no damn money. This is Ross World. I'm out.